Hey everybody, welcome back. It has been around 24 hours since I last got in front of this little camera on my netbook, and we are now ready to go on to step two. Step two of a maths trade. As you may recall from the last video, I had actually listed some games here on this particular geek list, and actually, I, when I looked uh, just now, I was surprised to see that somebody actually thumbed my 50 Japanese yen. Uh, so I guess they must be really excited about getting that. It was Igor, Igor Knop, or Igor Knop. Well, sorry, Igor, I'm not actually going to trade that stuff. And I'm sure he knows better since, as you can see, I did actually put an indicator that I'm not really trading this stuff, so I didn't want to mess with anybody. But anyway, like I said, it's been 24 hours, and if you look down at the bottom of the list, the guy running this, Russell, he has actually put a notification to everybody saying, hey, want list submission has been turned on. Submit your want list using the OLWLG by 10 p.m. Wednesday, August 21st. And you might be asking yourself, oh, well, what's the OLW? Or L L W L G. Well, that is the online want list generator, which is what this entire video is going to be about. How to use this awesome, awesome tool that has been created for us to be able to do mass trades. Now, I've already loaded it up. It's in my second tab. Let's just jump right over to it. You can see the URL. It's uh, bgg.activityclub.org slash OLWLG. I'll put the link to that in the show notes, too, so you can find it yourself. Now, the first time you ever come to this... It's not, it's not going to look like what I'm showing you right now. It's going to say, hey, you've never been here before. Give me your Board Game Geek username. And you'll have to do some login stuff. But it's really super simple, no problem at all. And then the next time you come back, this is what you'll see. You'll see the whole thing with um, you know, pretty much a history of, I don't know if this is literally, I've never even looked at the bottom, if this is every single mass trade that's ever happened. It goes and goes and goes. Let's see. Oh, going all the way back to 2006. I don't know if that means we started math trades in 2006, or maybe people just started using this tool in 2006. I don't know. Maybe it resets. But anyway, now, so once you get in, once you've actually logged in proper, uh, a couple quick uh, pointers before we actually get into the want list creation. I would suggest up here at the top, hit this little um, customization, your online want list generator profile, and you'll come to this page. And I strongly recommend turning on, as I have, one-click add and new style step four. You don't have to. They work just fine without, but both of these, I think, are an overall big improvement to the entire process. That's why they've been added. But, um, you know, the creator of the online wallet, this generator, is very, very smart by not shoving it down people's throat. They have the option to turn it on if they want. Also, I think he's just in the last week or two added this uh, notification stuff. I haven't even messed with that yet. I'm not going to play with that today. I'll learn it some other time, but apparently you can set yourself up some notifications. Oh, and you can also change the functionality of the looking glass. Although me, I'm perfectly happy with it is, so I leave that alone. But I would definitely come in here and turn on one-click add and new style step four. And then go ahead and submit. Of course, I already have. And it says, hooray, success. And then it, look, it looks like nothing's happened, but success. Now you can hit the little home button. Oh, come on. And go back to the OLWLG home. Actually, and while I'm here, I should give a big shout out to board game user Jeffy Jeff. A or also Jeff Michaud, or however you pronounce his name. Jeffy Jeff, who is an incredible asset to the Board Game Geek community. It's so awesome that he's created this for us, and he continues to maintain it, continues to improve it, continues to work with people. You know, I cannot thank, and I'm sure on behalf of everybody, none of us can thank Jeffy Jeff enough for his incredible um, service he provides everybody. And in fact, at the very least, if you want to, I believe you can click on this Fun Again link right here and because it will give him some, some store commission stuff. So I've already done that, even though I don't know if it works because I don't live in America. But uh, you know, whatever you can do to help out, definitely do it because Jeff is awesome. He deserves all, you know, uh, do the chip jar, the, the, the tip jar, do the Fun Again thing, whatever. But anyway, continuing on. Now, like I said, there's a list of about a billion um, math trades. But if you have items in any particular math trade, the one you care about will be right up here at the top. Your active math trade. And here it is, the August 2013 UK math trade. This is the one I'm in. And as you can see, I have a countdown, 3.3 days left to submit my wants. And that's what we're going to do in this video. I've already made a list and put it on the geek list of everything I want to trade. Now I'm going to tell the system, here's what I would like to get in exchange for my game, please. 
or my games. And we're going to go through that whole process right now. Before I start, though, there's one other thing I would strongly recommend as kind of a setup. And, you know, it's good to do this every once in a while. You scroll down a little bit, you see here the your collection date from BGG was last synchronized 69 days ago which is very sexy and so I'm actually gonna resync now it's always a good idea to do this because well, if you're like me at all I'm constantly changing my wish list and my want to buy list and it's good to have the OL WLG in sync with that because it's about to give me recommendations based on my wish list so I basically hit the button and it takes a little bit because you know it's got a Go to Board Game Geek and download all the data and parse it and do whatever it is that it's going to do. I didn't expect it to take quite this long, though. And now I just have to stall. Let's see. Honey, what's a, jo a good joke? Uh, what do you call a Frenchman's sandals? What do you call a Frenchman's sandals? Philippe Philops. Philippe Philops. I'm very sorry for that, everybody. <laughs> um, and we're still waiting for the BGG activity. Oh, okay, good. We're done. Alrighty, so we're all fetched, and so now everything's sunk up. You don't have to do that. It's totally optional, but I'm about to show you why it's a very good idea to keep, you know, just every once in a while sync that up, unless, of course, you don't use wish lists or whatever, in which case it's pointless. But anyway, okay, so now we're all ready to go. Scroll down right here, my active, and now the simple thing, I can just go on ahead and click it. Er, come here, you. Oh. And we will go to the page. We are now on step three of the online want list generator thing which is where I'm actually going to flag everything I want now this is often the case when you first come here it's showing Dixit which is item number 749 that is the last item on the entire list there are 749 items but I'd like to see everything please so um, if you notice up here this basically um, this shows you everything that's new since the last time you've been here since I've already been here there's nothing new so it's only showing me the end I want to see the whole list and so I click here on the whole list, and that's always right up there at the top. You always click that. And it'll take a little bit longer because it's going to have to pull up a list of 749 entries, which will happen. Oh, okay, it's done. And now, is it done? Come on. I think it is. Oh, there we go, yeah. So, remember, uh, there's item number one, Star Wars the Card Game, which, by the way, you'll notice is highlighted in green. Oh, scroll back up, silly goose. Uh, da, da, da. Highlighted in green because because I've sunk up my want list. The online want list generator thing knows that I that Star Wars. It, you see how it's green? Green is something that I want in trade. Yellow is something that's on my wish list. So it color codes things for me. It shows it, it points out things I've owned previously or that I have on pre-order that I already own. It's really really cool, and so that's why it's nice to have all this stuff in sync. So I mean, I can I can as I'm just scrolling through, I can be looking for color coding of hey green green stuff want that. And um, blue stuff. I already have that. And let's see what else. If I just scroll down a little bit more. Notre Dame. Yeah, I already have that. Um, ba -ba -ba. You know, uh, Age of Discovery. Used to have that. Don't get me started on that. Anyway. Um, oh, Core Worlds. Want that. Oh, and see, and this is an example of somebody when they um, they put a sweetener in. It's Core Worlds plus their expansion, the Core Worlds Galactic Order. And see, it's really, this is, remember, I was demoing yesterday. I could have just typed in Twister, but instead I added it as an item. That means when I come in here, actually, let's, let's find me. Let's see. Uh, t I do a search for Twister. Oh, there's the dungeon. Oh, here we are. Okay, Malapli. There it is. Um, it's item number 634 from Rado. That's me. Ships from Malta. Oh, I'll go back to the front end and say how you can, by default, you know, it doesn't say anything about Robert Compton, but you can do a thing so everybody has an idea of what country you're shipping from, which is nice. It's not important, but it's kind of nice. And you can see there's my Monopoly. Great, except my little metal dog is missing. Also includes Twister. And see, because I did it special, it's put it in as an active link with some more information, like its actual rank on Board Game Geek, um, you know, number 89, and also these little links. This is actually one of the awesome things. I mean, this whole tool is so cool. Let's actually, well, actually, let's not look at mine. Let's look at something real. Let's look at Star Wars the Card Game um, that Charlie Wonka over here has listed. So you can see, I've got his description. It's, you know, it tells me how many players, how long it takes, um, you know, 77,000, is that 77 million? People? No, 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 no. Uh, I forget what it is. Like 77 people have it on their trade list. 208 people have it on their want list. And 741 people that's that are in this match trade have it on their wish list. So that's kind of nice. You can tell this is going to be a popular thing. A lot of people want it. But there's these links up here as well. Um, this one uh, would actually... Oh, shoot. It doesn't actually show the pop-ups here because I'm doing this record thing and my cursor keeps flashing. I think the first one is actually would take me to a link on BoardGameGeek. But these, these additional ones could actually tell me at a glance, oh, there it is, 
how much they cost. Um, I'm not going to do that. The graph one takes me to a Java site that's really slow, but it's really cool. If I hit this other one, the table, it just does, does this little pop-up where I can actually look at the history, the recent history of how Star Wars has been selling on BoardGameGeek. So somebody bought it like new for 10 bucks. Oh, it was in an auction. And let's see, somebody paid 32 bucks for it. And, you know, with the description of what it is. So you can kind of get an idea overall of what the real value of these things are. Um, somebody paid 60 Oh, but that's because it came with a whole bunch of additional stuff. So that's just like a really nice tool if you're trying to determine whether, hey, you know, my, my Monopoly, I've looked it up. It has a value of 5 Does this thing have a value of 5 So you can, like, you make smart decisions about how to make And you could even click that little die. That's a link to Fun Again site. Um, where you can actually go to a page devoted to it, and you can see how much the game retails for in stores right now. And I don't know what this is. Mark your position so that if you revisit step three, oh, that's it's like a you can put in a a, a a bookmark. That's actually cool. I didn't realize that. That's uh, hadn't noticed that before. So anyway, these are just really handy if you're trying to do some kind of va um, you know price evaluation. But okay, but enough about that. Now, so what I'm going to start doing is say, okay, it's green, right? I definitely want Star Wars the card game. I want to add it to my want list because I want it. I've got two ways I can do it. And this is true for every single entry in here. I can hit the add button, which I'll do right now. And you can see it brings us. Now, this is a list of everything that I have put into this math trade. There's my 50 Japanese yen, my Atari 2600 copy of ET. And I added a couple more last night just so I'd have a few more things. I put in a copy of G.I. Joe Rise for, of Cobra Edition, uh, Flux. And if you read the description, it's like the entire collection of Flux. And Monopoly and Thundar the Barbarian, which, by the way, is the greatest Saturday morning cartoon of all time. If you don't agree, you can stop watching right now. But anyway, so those are the games that I have put in here. And if I say that, well, you know what? I want to, I definitely would trade my Thundar for Star Wars. And I'd trade my Monopoly. And I'd trade my battle, my battleship, G.I. Joe. And I'd trade my e copy of E.T. You better believe I'd trade that. And my 50 yen, because I looked it up. That's actually only five cents. But you know what? I wouldn't trade my Flux for it. Because if you look at the description of the Flux, it's all flux. And that's actually a fairly high value thing. I don't want to just give that away to anything. I, I think I might, you know, that might command some attention. So I want to use that for something big. So anyway, I can, so I, I've done all that. And I could check all. I could uncheck. A, optional value, you might as well consider it optional. It has no meaning. In 99% in of the math trades you're into, you might as well leave it blank because it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I save. And. Did it save? Is it saving? Uh, er. Did it? Oh, did I hit the wrong button? Let's try to look at this again. Okay, yeah. I save. Save. And, okay. And it's added to my geek list. And I can tell it's added to my geek list because you see this little shopping one-click add button has disappeared, so I know it's gone. Now, I could either do it that way. I could do the complicated thing where every single thing I click on, I can hit add, and then I can manually list for every single product what I want to trade it for. But that gets really slow and painful when you're looking at 700-plus items. That's where the little um, plus thing comes in. That's just a one-click ad. It's so much easier. So that's why I turned it on. It's not on by default, but if you turn on the one-click ad, it makes your life easier. Let me scroll, find something I'd really like. Um, Got to be some greens in here somewhere. Oh, there's Runebound. Yes, I am still trying to collect my 100% complete collection of all things Runebound. So, yes, I would like that. It's unpunched, unplayed. Shipping via Collect Plus from Kellis. Yes, I would definitely... Uh, so I'll just click on the, if I can highlight it, there we go, one-click add, boom, it's just done. I don't have to do all the manual things. So now, I have added two things to my want list. And I've got, whatever it is, 749 more items to look at. And you might say to yourself, my God, that's a lot of things to look at. If I'd have to literally look through all those things and figure it all out, that'll take me forever. Well, it can although it's kind of fun, but there's some ways you can make it a little bit easier. Oh, hey, here's another copy of Star Wars. I definitely want to add that. Hit the one-click add, and boom, it's added. Now, there's a couple ways you can make it a little bit easier to search this list. For starters, you may not know it by looking at these things, but these are sortable columns. I can click on rating and sort this whole thing. It'll take a little bit by the rating on board gaming. I think I clicked it. You don't get any feedback until it's actually... Um, there we go. And... So it's got the NAs at the top. I forget, is it reverse or not? i got to scroll down past the NAs to see if I'm at the bottom of the list or the top of the list. Oh, I'm at the bottom. I'm at the lowest rated. Flux is one of the lowest rated things in the world at 5.75. Let's go back up and click it again so we can sort in the other direction. 
If I were to complain about anything, I would say it would be kind of nice to, for it to sort in the direction you expect it to be. You know, best things first instead of last things first. Anyway, so recording again. Miscellaneous Game Magazine, which has no rating, of course, should go away shortly. And, all right, so apparently Dominion Prosperity hasn't gotten enough votes to actually have a real rank, but it's very, very high. It's actually, um, and let's see. So, um, and Cult of Terror. Okay, yeah. Well, you know the thing about ranking. If there's only a couple people who have ever ranked it, it's not going to be exactly the most uh, viable thing. But the, the, right at the top, if, if you just want to know about the best things that, um, as according to Board Game Geek user base, you can sort by this, and there's Eclipse, there's Polis, there's Agricola, there's Descent, there's Tolkien, the Mayan calendar. You can also, um, you know, that's the individual user rating, ratings. You can click by rank, and I guess I'll have to click twice again. All right, once, and it'll be, it'll be a long story. Ooh, it's hot in here. I'm going to turn on the fan. Just a second, folks. That'll be nice. Oh, and i got to hit it again. Because Dominion Prosperity has no ranking, because not enough people have uh, ranked it on Board Game Geek. See, so I think I've clicked that again, and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna assume I clicked it, even though you get no feedback, and it'll update itself. There we go. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. Oh. Well, shoot. I was sorted correctly, but now I'm sorted wrong. Mono hey, it's my copy of Monopoly. My copy of Monopoly is the absolute lowest ranked thing in this entire math trade. I bet it's gonna really go. People are really gonna want it. But anyway, and so if I click it again, obviously it'll sort, and then there'll be all the best games up front. So if you only care about, like, the top 100 games or whatever, that's a way you can sort. You can also sort by user if you want. Um, oh, here's another cool thing, too. Say, um, you know, hey, here's me. If you want to trade that, but you don't know if you're really confident about this Rado guy. Ships from Malta. Is he actually even going to deliver? You can click on him. You can click on anybody, and it goes back to BoardGameGeek and goes to a page that's devoted to that person's trade history. And here it comes, the feedback for me. Um, it'll be along any second. Da, da, da. I've traded a lot, so. And uh, see, so. And you can just scroll through and see that people like me. They really, really like me. I have a lot of positives if this would ever start scrolling. Oh, but it's still loading because my machine is so slow. Because the thing. Oh, I didn't expect this to take so long. Come on. Camera software killing my machine. Well. Alrighty. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So I got lots of positives. Positive, positive, positive. Super. Thanks for that. Great, great. You know. So you could you could say, well, hey, I guess I'm pretty confident about this guy shipping to me. Probably won't be dinged up in the mail because clearly people say that he's a good guy. So anyway, I just wanted everybody to know I was a good guy, even though you had to wait 20 seconds to see that. Hi, everybody. So anyway, so I can now go through this list of 751 objects or whatever it was and click the one-click ads for all the things I want. There's an easier way, though. Um, let's go back to the home. Although there's shortcuts. To pretty, you can see there's shortcuts to almost everything up at the top. I'm going to go back to the, because I'm going to show you what I always do when I come in looking for my want list. I come over here. I find the thing. Scroll down. I don't go straight to the link like I did before. I click this little um, hourglass, because this will show me everything that I want, that I have put on my wish list, my want list, etc. It'll just show it to me and only show me those items. Dee, dee, dee. And so I'll just take, won't take quite as long because it's not that long. And you see, hey, there's Goblins Inc. Um, it's not really high on my list, but what the heck, yeah, I'll add it. And Polis, yeah, I'll add it. And Lost Legacy, actually I would add it, but somebody, I think I got a line on it, and so I'm not going to add it, but Edo, oh, I want Edo so bad. And Divinair, I've heard good things about it. Oops, and what did I just do? Oh, I hit a button that took me to another page. I must have accidentally clicked. Oh, sorry, folks. This is so slow. All right, continuing on. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I clicked one of the other links that actually took me. Let's see, Divinair, I definitely want. Uh, catacombs, yes, please. I actually really regret ever trading Catacombs away. Uh, I had it a long time ago. We didn't have table space to play it. And now that we live in Malta, we've got this gigantic table. It'll be so easy to play. Ooh, Figure Shake Grand Prix. I've been wanting to get that for a while, this weird little Korean game. Fossil Machine, I'm not really that bothered. City of Remnants, eh, it's pretty low. I don't care about it. Pirate Dice, yeah, I guess I could take it. Oh, and you can see the person who did it is really nice. They put in all the links for all their stuff, so I know exactly what's coming with this. Let's see if there's any of these other things I want. That was about half of it. Oh, D-Day. Oh, look at that. Two copies of D-Day Dice. Yes, I'll take that. D-Day Dice. And no, there's different. This is a D-Day dice without anything. It's just the game. And then this one is a D-Day dice with some expansions. So that'll be interesting. Um, drum roll. I know I've got a copy of that in the mail. Hobbit Unexpected. Oh, and what the heck? Core Worlds. Because it's got the expansions, sure. All right. Cool. Now, 
That's all the stuff I care about. If I cared more, I could go, I could hit the step three thing, see that big, well, actually, let's look, uh, you know, because there's other stuff I could search for, too. I, I hit the, um, the magnifying glass. That showed me everything I care about. I can hit gift certificates, and it'll show me every gift certificate. I've never seen any gift certificates. I don't know how those work, but in case anybody has offered gift certificates, they'd be there. Let's see if anybody's offered Geek Gold in this one. And I think they just do a simple text search to find out if there is any. And, in fact, yes. Hey, you know what? I'll take Geek Gold. I'd like 500 Geek Gold, please. I will add that with a one-click ad. Okay. And now those are all the shortcuts. And, um, oh, and there's like a list of everything I've added so far to my want list. I can, you know, I, I can see the information in lots of different ways. But now there's one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the full list, step three. Show you a couple other things that I generally do when, I, when I'm doing this. Okay, and I, I mean, I gotta, I've got to expand it because it's only showing the final entry. Come here. Now I'll take a little bit, of course. Uh, while waiting for bgg.activityclub.org. It'll be a long momentarily. Sorry, folks, I really need a faster laptop. Oh, it's so painful. But you're very patient. Now, so, I mean, I already know that I've gotten everything that I... Pre but, you know, there's a lot of other stuff in here, too. Uh, remember how I was, like, adding things that don't even... I mean, I added a video game. Maybe somebody want that. Um, the easiest way to look for the oddball things I find, you know, the, the, the things that aren't, that wouldn't be on your want list, I just come in here and I do a search for... What is it? Alt name. Um, and then, remember how I was typing in alt name for um, stuff? See, somebody has actually added a comedy DVD collection. Uh, Bill Bailey Classic, Cosmic Jam, um, Harry Hill, Burp TV, a whole bunch of stuff. Free shipping. I don't know if I really care about that, but what the heck? Let's say I do. I'll add that as well. And so this is actually kind of a nice way... I mean, rather than looking by hand through 750 and, and more, I mean, I've seen um, these geek lists like upwards of over 1,000, upwards of 2,000 items in here if it's a really popular one. So this is a nice way to look for stuff. Just search for alt name. Um, let's see what else. Uh, let's see. This is a yeah, hero clicks. This guy put alt name in even though it doesn't work, right? Um, alt name pretty much only works. Remember I showed you yesterday with the outside the, what do you call it? Outside the, I forget the term. But anyway, oh, there's a comedy. Is that it? Oh, do do. Are those the only two? Oh, right. Okay, that's right. Because I don't do a search for alt name. These alt names are showing up because somebody messed up. It's actually a search for alt space name. That you know, that will actually show me all of them. You can see on the right, there's a bunch of stuff. So, 25 pounds. Yes, please. This is the easiest way. In every match rate, there's always going to be a bunch of people offering money. And if you just want money for your games, this is a great way to get it. So just do a search for alt space name, and you can start searching through. And yeah, I'll take 25 pounds. Yeah, I'll take uh, 15 pounds. Yeah, I'll take And you can see uh, Crawdaddy, he knows how to do it right. He says that he'll pay the fees. So I don't have to wonder, am I going to have to pay the fees on that $25 you know, um, transfer? So this is how you'd find all the money entries, you know, like all DVD collections, video games. Hey, here's a graphic novel. Um, the entire wanted graphic novel. Um, actually, I've read it. It was okay, but, you know, Mark Millar, meh, whatever. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some more alt names. Um, and Android Smart. This thing, this little pink mini Android, um, what's your game? This guy or girl has been listing this for months, and nobody's taken it. I'll, what the hell? I'll add it and see if he wants my 50, and I'll, I'll trade my 50 yen for it. See if he'll go for that. Probably not. But anyway, okay. So, now let's say I've done that. I've gone through this thoroughly. I've made a list. Oh, a selection of new Blu-rays. The Thing. And um, Gulliver's Travels. Whatever. Sure, why not? I'll add that too. Okay. So, I've gone through here. I've got everything I want. The games for my wish list. Oddball selections. And now I can move on to what is called... Um, editing my want list. Let's see, I think it'll be, yep, there you go, step four. I was on step three right now. Now I will go to step four, editing and submitting my wants. And now this is where people can run into a lot of trouble. Um, let's see. So you see here, this is a list of everything I've added, right? There's the comedy DVD sex. Here's those two copies of D-Day dice. There's the two Star Wars I've had. And remember, with all these, I was just using the one-click ad, so all these spaces are empty except for the first one. Remember, for the first one, for Star Wars, I actually added and I clicked all these things manually. I didn't do that for anything else, so now I'm going to have to do all the clicking for everything else. I have to, the, you know, here's a column of the stuff I've got. Uh, my Battleship G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, my Thundar the Barbarian. And again, these are clickable too. I could click on these and get a little bit of information in case I've forgotten what it is. Um, right. 
you know, there's my little note I put in it. I can even see the val the price range. Let's see, actually, I have no idea what Battleship G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra Edition goes for. Um, let's see. Apparently, one person bought it for <laughs> 9 bucks U.S. So, uh, oh, wait, no, no, no one's even bought it. Somebody is trying to sell it. So, apparently, not a very hot property. But let's say it was a hot property. Obviously, if I were doing this for real, I'd be putting my copy of Terra Mystica up. And I'd be putting my, what do I want to trade away? I want to put, trade my, uh, my copy of Archipelago. And, um, oh, what else? Oh. Well, I mean, I've, I've got several games I'd like to, to trade right now. I'll talk about that in a bit, too. Um, but let's just say I'm actually trading some good stuff that people might actually want. Now, what i got to do is, and this is, this is the uh, most labor-intensive of all these things, I've got to go through all these items and say what I want to trade. For the 500 geek gold, let's see, 500 geek gold, that's not that big a deal. Of course, I will trade my, um, what do you call it, my Japanese yen. 50, uh, yeah, I'll give 50 yen for 500 geek gold, sure. And, uh, yeah, my Monopoly with the broken box and the missing, sure, I'll, I'll trade that too. It's Hungarian, I know what he wants it. Oh, but let's just say, let's pretend that the world is correct and fair and just, and Thundar the Barbarian, the board game, is one of the most hotly sought after titles in the universe, because it should be, because I previously said Thundar the Barbarian is the greatest Saturday morning cartoon of all time, even though the game itself is crap. Everybody wants this really bad. You can bet, um, I don't know that I want to trade that. My big ticket item, my absolute best thing for Pole is Fight of the Hegemony, although that's actually a pretty hot title too. I know a lot of people, that's kind of hard to get. You know what, actually, that doesn't make sense. That seems like a fair trade to me. Because everything I'm doing here, this is a one-to-one. -one. Because I've clicked these things, and this is a mistake some people make, I'm not saying that I'm going to trade Thundar the Barbarian and Monopoly and 50 Yen for Polis. I'm, I'm suggesting, hey, to get that Polis, I would happily give up my Monopoly or my Thundar or my Japanese Yen. And, you know, to get this copy of Star Wars, I'm saying I'll give up anything. Um, let's see. So, yeah, and of course, actually, I, I want to go the other way. I, I want Polis so bad, I'm going to give anything for it. I'll give anything, including my big super collection of Flux and my G.I. Joe and, no, not my Thundar. My Thundar, I value it so much. It's, you know, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. I don't want it. I don't want to trade enough for that. And in fact, actually, now this is the thing, too. A lot of people, you know, they have something really valuable that a lot of people would want, and they don't list it. Because they go to the they go to the uh, geek list and say, well, hey, nobody's listed anything I want, so I'm not going to list a thing that I might want to sell. And that's so wrong. If you have something that you're thinking you might want to trade, list it. It's not a it, you don't have to commit to list it. You don't have to commit to trading it away. List it. The more cool, rare things show up on a geek list, or a math trade, the more other people will get. Would, you know, it becomes a snowball. So don't wait for somebody else to list something cool, because if you list something cool, maybe they will. Be the first person to do it. So anyway, yeah, and as it turns out, nothing came out that I want to give up my Thundar for, because I love my Thundar so much. So I'm going to uncheck that Star Wars. And now, but anyway, I've got to do this for the rest. Normally, it's not quite so bad. I want, I want Catacombs pretty bad. I'm going to give away everything except for my Thundar again. And, uh, anyway, and I keep doing this. Now, okay, oh, but now here's the important thing. Now, here's the tricky thing. Look, I've got two copies of Star Wars. And here's a, now, this is the number one mistake people make. It's a very good chance you'll make it. I've made it. Everybody's made it. You'll think, hey, you know what? I want Star Wars. Great. There's two copies. I've, you know, and I've said on both of these copies that I'm happy to give up anything except for my Thundar and my Flux, right? And so that means that really ups my chances of getting Star Wars. No, what that does is that ups your chances of getting two copies of Star Wars. That can be a bad thing. You'd, um, and that's where duplicate protection comes in. This is a very important thing. So actually what I always do before I start ticking these boxes at all, let me just untick these Star Wars because it will mess things up otherwise. Before you ever start ticking boxes in here and saying, yes, I'd be willing to trade my Thundar for Star Wars or whatever, when you're just looking at this list, and it's a big empty list, uh, hasn't been, nothing's been checkboxed, come down here to the bottom, and you will see a link. Oh, where is it? No, it must be at the top. Uh, where is it? Oh, okay. Eh, that's weird. Uh, okay, confirm changes. I'm going to... Come back to this in a second. Okay, same set of changes. Right. Okay. Now, right. Okay. I, okay. I've, I've, I've saved my want list. I made some changes. I saved it. Now you'll notice there's a bunch of new icons, right? I'm going to hit the duplicate protection. 
Now, this is a really simple thing. It comes with a bunch of stuff. You can ignore all this. All you want to do is create dummies the easy way. Yes, please. You could do it the hard way. Don't do it the hard way. Just create them the easy way and click yes. Create a D-Day dice and a Star Wars dummy for me and hit submit. Now, what that means is when I come back to the list, you'll notice things are a little bit different. Um, because it's taken my D-Day dice. The two I, I had two entries of D-Day dice I wanted and I had two Star Wars. It's taken them and and um, I grouped them together and made them part of the D-Day dice and Star Wars dummies. Um, so you can see. Now what I don't want to do is, and it'll actually shout at me if I do it. If I try to click any of these, it'll it'll it becomes red. Or, no. Okay. If I save, I bet it will. Let's see if I because it'll warn me. You don't want to do that because it can mess things up. Let's see if it actually. Oh, I just never do these things, so I don't want to mess them up. Let's go ahead and confirm changes to see what happens. Sorry, this is taking a lot, but I'm just trying to cover everything that you might run into. All right, you can see how it's it's all in red, um, and it's warning me I've made a mistake here. You never add a member of a dummy duplicate thing as a thing you want. So I'm going to uncheck that, and hooray, everything's fine. No more red. Now, what if you look down at the bottom of the list or somewhere, there's these two new items, D-Day Dice, and Star Wars dice. And you'll notice it says I've listed them. Rado has created these. It's because these are the dummies. And it's these things I click. I say, you know what? To get that Star Wars dummy item, I would happily trade. I don't want to trade my Thundar. I don't want to trade my um, Flux, but I'll trade my Battlestar Galactica battleship, or my, my Geodo battleship. I'll trade my Monopoly. I'll trade my Japanese Yen. And um, I'll trade my Atari 20 Center copy of ET, but I won't trade my Flux, which is a big. That's actually, did I make Flux a big thing? Let me look. I, I forgot what my Flux is. Let me see what I actually called it. Uh, unopened, unsold, anywhere for free. Take them. Um, does it matter? For you? All other Fluxes. So yeah, this is a big super thing. This would actually cost a lot of money. Every single copy of Flux in existence. Yeah. So I'm not going to trade that for anything. And in fact, I don't think there's anything on this list valuable enough. For me to give up all my fluxes. Maybe if somebody had put Poseidon's Kingdom, um, you know, or the collector's edition of War of the Ring. So I'm not going to trade that. But you know what? Heck, maybe I'm desperate. Maybe I just want to get rid of these flux so bad that I will. Yeah, I will trade ca um, catac to get. I'll trade all my flux to get catacombs or polis fire for the hegemony. But not the D-Day dice. I don't care about that that much. But for my dummy item on Star Wars, me no, I don't want Star Wars enough to give up all my flux because I think that's too valuable. And I think it'll go for something more because there's got to be somebody out there who wants a copy of every instant, everything of Flux in the universe. So anyway, I keep doing this. And like, so, oh, those, those Blu-rays? Yeah, you know what? I'm not really that into it. I don't really care. But I'll give my 50 yen. And I will give my, uh, my copy of E.T. and my copy of Monopoly. Sure, but nothing else. Core Worlds, that's another one I really want. Everything except for Thundar. Um, and even my Flux because it includes, as you can see, see this is why it's so nice. Um, because he because he entered it correctly, he didn't just type in Galactic Orders. He actually entered it as an item. It shows up on my list here, so I can see how it's you know what the sweetener is. So I'll say yes, that's good enough. I want for my flux. See the new Blu-rays? Eh. I'll, again, I'll give up just my three cheapos because I don't really care about it that much. Um, the smartphone? Yeah. Someday I'm gonna get that smartphone. Someday, um, if I keep offering cheap stuff, who? What's your game? We'll give up. And give it to me, uh, or the system will. Now, let's see another DVD collection. I've forgotten what it was. I can now actually, if I click this, it'll actually literally take me to the geek list. But I can just click the little hourglass instead. If I can highlight it, and it'll remind me what it is. Let's see. Oh, it's oh yeah, it's the Benny Hill or not the the, the Harry Hill stuff and all that. Yeah, you know what? I don't really care about that. That's weird British comedy that I don't have any nostalgia for. So yeah, just the cheapo stuff again. Um, 25 pounds. Hey, yeah, definitely I'll take that. And, and this is kind of, it's, it's a shame that I have to always kind of come back up and look because I've got a really low res screen. Yeah, I'll give up um, G.I. Joe Battleship for 25 bucks too. And for 15 bucks, sure. But not for 10 bucks. I like it enough that I'm not going to do it for 10 bucks. But all my other cheap things, sure, you bet. Goblins Inc. Um, yeah. Ugh, so slow. Uh, do I want do I want to give up my battleship? Yeah, sure. Runebound, definitely. Runebound, I want that a lot because you know Runebound's out of uh, Boba. But I want enough. Uh, I don't know. 
That thing probably, well, if I want to know how much it goes for, again, I can just click this little thing and kind of get a feeling for how much is this really worth? Really? Let's see. And what have I clicked? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've gone to a list. And um, let's see. Uh, so somebody bought it for 20 bucks. Somebody bought it for 30 bucks, 17 bucks. So it looks like these days, oh, actually, um, oh, but yeah, but that's from a long time ago. No, no, that's more recently. Going up into 2000, up at the top of the list, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to value that thing around 20, 25 bucks based on sales history. And I say, yeah, I'm not going to give up my, I'll give up my Battleship, but not my Flux for it. Divinair, yeah, the Battleship, but not the Flux or the Thundar. The Pirate Dice, almost done, folks. But I'm showing you the whole thing. Pirate Dice, now... It is, it's got all the, I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly, those were um, Kickstarter or limited ex, uh, edition extensions. Let's see what this guy said, uh, if, he, if he had any further descriptions about it. Um, yep, they're Kickstarter stuff. So these are probably limited edition. If I don't get this now, I'd never be able to get those additional things. It's a, and it's in near new condition, free shipping. That sounds great. I'll put my Flux up as well. Sounds good. But not my Thundar. My Thundar is too sweet and precious to me. And then um, Grand Cree, I've wanted this for quite a while. This has actually been listed for a while. Somebody should really grab it. Um, so I hear it's actually a pretty good game. But I don't, do I want, no, I don't want to give my flux. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with those. Alrighty. And, alright, yep, so that's all fine. And now let's go on ahead, oops, scroll back to the bottom very slowly and painfully, and confirm my changes. Oh, now that, that warning is there from when I accidentally had done a duplicate thing. Uh, but remember, I cleared that out, so that's clean. It's, it's no problem. Alrighty. So confirming changes. And now, as you can see, it's actually reordered my stuff. Um, you know, it kind of in the way I value them. Clearly, I value Bar Thundar so much because I didn't put it on anything. I wasn't willing to trade anything for it. I valued Flux next most because I'm only trading one, two, three, four, five. There are only five things I would actually give my Flux up for: Star Wars, Core Worlds, Catacombs, Polis, and the Pirate Dice Super Pack. Um, and then, you know, I'm a little bit more. There's a lot more stuff I'd give up the Battleship for, and then these other cheap things: the the 50 yen and the the copy of E.T. and the old copy of Monopoly. Heck, I'll trade any of those things for it. Now, and again, these are the dummy items. Leave these blank, because if I put them in there, it'll complain again about the duplicate protection. So don't click any of those. And now you'll notice this one. See the yellow? This system is so smart. It recognizes that I did something wrong here. Because it says, hey, you know what? I noticed you were willing to um, you know, get, you know, give these things up for 25 pounds, and you were willing to give them up for um, 10 pounds. So you were willing to give up Monopoly for 10 pounds. Why didn't you want to give it up for 15 pounds? And it's just like a neat little thing. It, it reminds me of, yeah, you're right, I made a mistake. Yes, of course I want to give up Monopoly and my copy VT and my 50 yen for 15 pounds. That's great. Hooray. And I'll save again. Thanks, Online Wantless Generator, for reminding me with that little yellow warning. I'll confirm again. Now, I am all done. I have made it. I have made my want list successfully. I've got a couple of dummies. I, although it's interesting, by putting these two D-Day dices into the dummies, one of them is better than the other. One of them comes with two expansions, and one of them doesn't. I think. If I look at the description for it, yep, it's just the base game. Um, so, and the thing is, by doing duplicate protection, I'm taking a gamble that I, I don't know if I get either of them. I don't know which one it'll be. And so if I wanted to guarantee I'd get one of them, I couldn't use duplicate protection. So that's something to pay attention to. But you know what? I don't care about D-Day Nice that much. Because if I recall correctly, what did I list it for? You know, I, yeah, I wasn't going to do my flux for it. Um, you know what? Actually, I think I will take my um, battleship because I don't value it enough in case I get the crappy one. If I get the one that has the bonuses, but since I, they're both in the, in the duplicate protection, I'm going to submit again about that little bit of a change. And now I'm done. Are you, are you, yes. And so now the last thing I can do, I will be finished once and for all when I hit submit my, my, submit my uh, list. Actually, let's go ahead and do it. And now this is official. And if anybody in the want list has said they wanted my flux or my battleship or whatever, there's a chance I might trade these things away, which would be very bad because, of course, I don't own any of these things. But I'll clean that up later. Don't worry about that, folks. Now, Here's one thing that the system is not smart enough to find out that's going to bite me in the ass. People are going to be pissed off later because I have engaged in what's called arbitrage. Arbitrage 
is when you say, you know what, I'm putting 10 bucks up and I'd like to train by 10 bucks for 15 bucks. That is strictly verboten. I don't think there's any match rate that allows that. But I've done it because if you notice, I said, yeah, I would like to give up my 50 yen to get 25 pounds. Now, chances are, if a trade goes through because of that, if I'm successful in giving up 50 yen, which remember is like 5 cents, to get 25 pounds, the whole thing will stop. And people, will, you know, and you know, after the whole thing's over, I'll, they'll email me, we'll have to do a bunch of surgery, it'll be very, very bad. So I've been very bad, I have traded money for money. So don't do that. Because it will make people mad at you and it'll slow down the whole works and gum it up. And so I'm going to undo that, confirm my changes again, so I'm not engaging in arbitrage. That's very important. If you're, if you're trying to do money, don't trade money for money. Don't trade geek gold for geek gold. Um, you know, money for games, geek gold for games, that's all cool, but not, you know, I, I, even money for geek gold, that's fine, but not money for money or geek gold for geek gold. Because that's, that's it. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. Now, this is a case where it's saying, hey, are you sure you don't want to trade your yen for this money? Oops, I missed one. Oopsie. And I, and I have to say, yes, online want list generator, I don't want to do that because I don't want everybody to hate my guts. So I will confirm changes again, very slowly. I, I, it's, it's tricky, uh, my, my mouse cursor is flashing, I can barely see it, and everything moves really slow, so it's very difficult to select things. So anyway, so now I've got that little warning saying, hey, that's kind of weird, but I've done it on purpose because I don't want arbitrage. Don't do arbitrage. Everybody will hate your guts. Now, actually, I should say, one time I did see somebody who actually listed, I believe it was some Japanese yen, or no, it was some Chinese yuan. I think that's right. Yuan? I don't know. And what they did is they listed it not for its monetary value, but so that you could use them as markers because Chinese yuan is a very cool coin with a little hole in the center. And they listed it as saying, hey, I've got a whole bunch of Chinese yuan. I am, I am trading this as a game piece. And I believe that was a pass, or at least, you know, the guy running that math trade allowed it. In fact, actually, yeah, I think I was the guy running that math trade because it was my promo math trade. And I thought, yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, sure, it's arbitrage. Maybe somebody would pay 10 bucks for that. But I could see that as being viable because they weren't buying, they weren't trading money for money. They were trading money for really cool um, game pieces. So it's up to the person who runs a math trade whether they will let it through. But I don't want to take any chances here. So I've cleared it all out. I've, sub, um, I've submitted my want list. Or no, I've, I've confirmed it. And now, remember, see, it says warning. You've made changes since the last time you submitted. So it's reminding me, hey, you made some changes. You better submit again, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to submit again. And, it, you know, and this gives me like a little, so I can spot check. This is a nice way to spot check. Um, you know, really, if, would I give up my copy of Monopoly for any of these things? Yes, I would. Would I give up my copy, or would I give up my 50 yen for anything? Yes, I would. Would I give up my, let's go to a better one. But I give up my flux for these things. And now it's so easy to get caught up when you're making these marks. Really think about it. Because it's easy to get mat trade remorse that, okay, I said I would do it. But then when everything's completed and it turns out I did get um, pirate dice for my flux, uh, maybe I didn't want to do that. But, you know, once it's all trades are final. So make sure that you would be happy to be told tomorrow that, hey, you've got to send away your flux and you'll get a copy of Pirate Dice with stuff in return. So anyway, I say, yes, I'm totally cool with this. I will submit my wants. And that is the end of phase two of a math trade. Thank you for confirming your want list. Now, if, you, if I come back over here to Board Game Geek, I think if I scroll up, you'll see I've actually gotten a couple of geek mails. Let's see if I go to my geek mail. You can see my geek mail. No, won't that be exciting? Um, very, very slowly. Come on. I have clicked it. Yes, I have. In fact, yes, you see, oh, somebody uh, says hi from Texas um, and some other stuff. And, but anyway, I, I've, I've submitted twice. So this is a reminder, and I think it's actually a, it's a dupe of that, uh, that list of text I got. This is a reminder that I have submitted, and, you know, and it starts to list everything that I'm willing to trade. So if you don't get one of these geek mails, go back and submit again just to make sure. Oops, that was a price check. Just to make sure. Now, now the only thing left to do, I am done. I have successfully created my online want list. Now all I got to do is wait 3.2 days because we got to give enough time for everybody to do their want list and submit them. And then I come back. Say I come back in uh, three and a half days. Um, I will find that there has been some new messages on the geek list 
And I, if I come back here, I'll see some more information. Now, I'm going to show you what that looks like in the third video. So I'm, I didn't plan on doing this video. I'm going to do a third video to walk you through what to do after the whole thing is over and you've got some stuff to trade. Because a lot of people don't know quite how to do that either. So I'm going to do that. Oh, but before I do, a couple more things since I'm here in the want list generator that I haven't actually talked about. So actually, let me double check, make sure if there is anything else. I've told you all the main stuff, how to do duplicate protection, very important. Protect yourself. So many people screw themselves by not doing duplicate protection correctly. But you saw how simple it is. Just one click, add everything you want, and then before you start assigning wants, click the duplicate protector thing on your want list. Check, yes, I want these things created, and then make sure that if you accidentally click and the whole row becomes red, you've done it wrong. So, um, let's see, is there anything else we're talking about in here? Oh, yeah, now that I'm waiting, you know, I, I've done it. Now I'm just having to wait three days. I can, if just for, for fun, I can come over here and I can look at the statistics. Well, actually, there aren't any statistics yet. But I can look in the uh, users for the math trade. This is so I can feel superior. And I can see who else has actually done it. See, Crawdaddy, the guy who's running it, he hasn't submitted his wanted wants yet. And um, let's see, James, come on, James. I've traded with James several times. Verado, look at me, over there in Malta, I've done it. And so this is kind of a nice thing, so you can watch as we're waiting, the, the time counts down. And all the ones in yellow, those are people that are trading something that I want. So I'm hoping, come on, Bonnie Prince, Bonnie Prince, put your trade list in, because if they don't, I'll never get a chance to get whatever it is that I was hoping they're trading. So that's just kind of a nice little thing, too. But anyway, that's the basics of how to run through the online wall list generator. Sorry, this took me a lot longer than I thought it would, but if I'd known, I would have, because it's so complex. There's so many steps, but hopefully... You have a pretty good idea of how to go through this. Like I said, in three days' time, I'm going to get any, or I'm going to get a notification telling me that the trade is over and I can find out what did I actually get. And if you'd like to watch that and learn the final process of actually shipping stuff, you can go ahead and hit the button that's on screen right now. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, by all, ways, by all means, let me know. If I made any mistakes, God forbid, please let me know and I'll put notes in. But otherwise, I'll give you five, four, let's see, it's F10, right? Three, Two, one. Okay, thanks everybody.